In this video, we're going to go over the CUDA software infinite pre-calculus free worksheet indefinite integrals. We're going to evaluate each indefinite integral. Now an indefinite integral we can think of as the antiderivative. For example, if we took the integral of the derivative of the function of x with respect to x, that's going to be equal to our original function plus c, and c is some arbitrary constant. And we need to add the c when we do the indefinite integral because we do not know whether we had taken the derivative of a constant or not. Because remember, the derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of one is zero. The derivative of two is zero. The derivative of 100 is zero. The derivative of negative 500 is zero, and so on. So because we do not know what that constant was, we need to add it at the end as c, the arbitrary constant. And a quick formula to help us find the integral is if we have the integral of a times x to the n with respects to x, so dx, that's going to equal a, so the coefficient of that term, times x to the n plus 1, because remember, when we take the derivative, we decrease the exponent by 1, so if we take the antiderivative, or the integral, we're adding 1 to the exponent, and that's going to be all over n plus 1, and it's over n plus 1 because, remember, when we take the exponent and multiply it, we need to figure out what the coefficient used to be, and we do that by dividing by n plus 1. And then we have to add c, that arbitrary constant. So let's use this formula for number 1. In number 1 we have the integral of 30x to the fifth with respects to x. So that's going to be equal to 30 times x to the n plus 1, so 5 plus 1 all over n plus 1 which is 5 plus 1, plus c. So that's going to be 30 times x to the 6, all over 6, plus c, which gives us 30 divided by 6 is 5. So 5 times x to the 6 plus c is our solution in number 1. And again, reiterating why we divided by n plus 1 is because if we were to now take the derivative of 5x to the 6, we would take that 6 and bring it down and multiply it by 5 to get 30, and then decrease that exponent by 1 to get 5, so 30x to the 5th. But we had to figure out what this coefficient was, so we had to divide our new coefficient by what the old exponent was, which was 6. Let's move on to number 2. This is going to equal 24 times x to the 5 plus 1 all over 5 plus 1, and we need to add c, that arbitrary constant. So that's going to give us 24 times x to the 6 over 6 plus c, which equals 4 times x to the 6 plus c. That is our solution in number 2. So again, if we wanted to work backwards and double check, we'll take the derivative of 4x to the 6. So 6 will get multiplied to 4 to be 24, and then 6 will decrease by 1 to give us 5. And taking the derivative of some constant c is 0. So 24x to the 5th plus 0 is 24x to the 5th. Now moving on to number 3. And number 3, we can think of negative 3 as being the integral of negative 3 times x to the 0, so taking the integral of negative 3 x to the 0 with respect to x, because x times 0 is 1, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So now we're going to apply our formula. So we'll have a times x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So that's negative 3 times x to the 0 plus 1, over 0 plus 1, and then we have to add that constant of c. 
Do not forget that constant. That is important when dealing with indefinite integrals. So that's going to give us negative 3 times x to the 1, or simply x, all over 1, which is negative 3 times x plus c. That is our solution in number 3. For number 4, if we added 1 to the exponent of x, that would be 3. And then if we divide it 15 by that value of the new exponent of 3, that would be 5 times x cubed. So our solution is 5x cubed plus c. So it's not necessary to write out the formula each and every time, but I'll do so until we get familiar with the method. So again, I took 15. I multiplied that by x to our new exponent of n plus 1, which was 2 plus 1, and divided that by n plus 1, which was 2 plus 1. And then I added c. So that was 15 times x to the third over 3 plus c, which gave me 5x to the third plus c. So again, you're just working backwards. When we do the derivative, we take the exponent, multiply it to the coefficient, and then decrease it by 1. When we do the antiderivative, we first start by increasing that exponent by 1 and then dividing by the value of that new exponent. Now on to number five. And just like derivatives, for integrals, the terms are worked independently. So we're going to find the integral of 12x to the fifth and the integral of 6x with subtraction in between those terms. So I'll have 12x to the five plus one over five plus one minus six x to the one plus one because that exponent is one all over 1 plus 1, and then I'm adding c. So that's 12x to the 6th over 6 minus 6x squared over 2 plus c. 12 divided by 6 is 2, so that gives me 2x to the 6th minus 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 3x squared plus c. And again, we're adding c because we don't know if there was a plus zero to this formula. And when we're taking the integral, we're finding the antiderivative and the derivative of a constant c is zero. So the integral of zero would be some constant c. So again, for number five, it's two x to the six minus three x squared plus c. And feel free to double check and calculate the derivative and see if you get that function within the integral. For number six, working through my terms independently, I'm going to have 20 times x to the 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 plus 4 times x to the 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 and adding that c. So that's 20 times x to the fourth over four plus four times x squared over two plus c. 20 divided by four is five, so that's going to be five x to the fourth plus four divided by two is two, so that's two x squared, and then I'm adding c. Five x to the fourth plus two x squared plus c. For number seven, we're taking the integral of 12x to the fifth minus 4x. So that's going to be 12 times x to the five plus one over five plus one minus, since my terms were subtracted, four times x to the one plus one over one plus one, since that degree of x was one, and then I'm adding c. So that's going to be 12 times x to the six over six minus four times x squared over two plus c. 12 times x to the six over six, well, 12 divided by six is two, so that's two x to the six minus four over two is two, so that's two x squared plus c. 
And lastly, for this section, number 8, we'll have 24x to the 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 plus 1 times x, and this is times x to the 0 within the integral because x to the 0 is equal to 1, so I'm going to have x to the 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1. So a x to the n plus 1 is 1 times x to the 0 plus 1, and that's all over n plus 1, or all over 0 plus 1, and then I'm adding c. Do not forget to add c. I know I probably sound like a broken record, but if you do not add c, your answer is incorrect because there could be some constant that we are unaware of. So 24 times x to the 5 plus 1 is 24 times x to the 6, and that's all over 6, plus 1 times x to the 0 plus 1 is 1 times x to the 1, and that's all over 1, and then we're adding c. 24 divided by 6 is 4, so we have 4 times x to the 6 plus 1 over 1 is 1, times x to the first is simply 1x, or x, and then we add our c. 4x to the 6 plus x plus c. Now on to our critical thinking question. For number 9, it says what is the derivative of 2x to the 6 minus 2x squared plus c? Now remember, what we're going to do to find the derivative is we take the exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, and then decrease that exponent value by 1. So we'll have 6 times 2 times x to the 6 minus 1, and then we're going to be subtracting, because these terms are subtracted, we're going to take this exponent of 2, multiply it by 2, and then decrease it by 1. So that's going to be 2 times 2 times x to the 2 minus 1, and remember, the derivative of a constant is 0. So essentially plus 0. But we don't have to write this because we know that adding 0 will not change the value. So working out my problem, 6 times 2 is 12. x to the 6 minus 1 is x to the 5 or x to the 5th because 6 minus 1 is 5. So I have 12x to the 5th. And then I'm subtracting 2 times 2, which is 4, times x to the 2 minus 1, which is x to the 1, or x to the 1st, which is simply x. So the derivative for number 9 is 12x to the 5th minus 4x. And with that, we wrap up our indefinite integrals worksheet. If you haven't done so already, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your peers. And if you want to support me in other ways, feel free to become a patron. Go to mainmap.com to figure out how you can become a patron.